Yeah, hi everyone. This is uh, going to be a follow-up to the video I've just put up a couple of days ago about using a capacitive stylus in Windows 8. And uh, I have since discovered that in OneNote one can modify the toolbars quite extensively. And so I'm going to do that on the OneNote on here, the desktop OneNote, and I'll put a video about it because it does make a difference to how easy it is to use OneNote with a pen. Um, my complaint originally was that once you use OneNote, go to the desktop, launch OneNote, the complaint I had is that if you use it like this with all the toolbars visible so that you can use them, and you need to use them a lot when drawing, there isn't much space. And so it just became a bit too difficult to use, and that's why I liked the preferred the Metro app or modern UI app for OneNote, um, because it was just it had a lot more space, a bit more finger friendly, but the problem with that is it doesn't allow drawing, at least not now, it doesn't allow drawing with a capacitive stylus. So one is forced to use the desktop OneNote for that purpose. Now that's not really such a bad thing, um, especially now I realize one can customize this quite a bit. Um, what we need to do is this, uh, along the top here, um, Office just a couple of versions ago started getting this uh, above the ribbon bar, this um, what used to be the title bar of the application, it now has buttons on it, has uh, tools on it, little icons to do things, and particularly the undo icon is up there. Um, that's also got this um, icon for changing between mouse and touch modes, which just enlarges some of the buttons and so on. Um, just to the right of that, there's a tiny little, tiny little downwards arrow, which you can barely make out. Um, if you press that one, it gives you a whole bunch of um, options for adding icons to the toolbar. And straight away on the list, you can see that we've got undo redo favorite pens, favorite highlighter, and so on. And there's also an option to go to more commands. And because I want to customize this with more buttons than are available here, that's where we're going to go. So we go down there to more commands. And this dialog is common to all Office apps, Office programs. And it lets you choose from all of the available tools, including many that are not actually on any of the menus. So there's a whole lot more hidden in Office than is um, displayed up front. So on the left are the available options, and on the right is the actual toolbar. So everything here on the right will show up at the top of the toolbar. At the moment there's back, undo, dock to desktop, and touch mouse mode. Now I'm going to remove that touch mouse mode. So you just highlight it and then press remove here. Moves that over to the left, basically just gets rid of it. Um, dock to desktop. Now that's a tool I may start using. I'll see about that. Um, it puts a small note window, snaps it to the right of the desktop, which is a bit weird because it's a bit like the uh, metro mode, snapping things to the side. Um, could be useful though. And there's undo, of course, which I'm going to move down. I'll leave the back there. And so then I'm going to look for some buttons that I'd like to use. And I'm going to use... I want to use the redo because I often undo and then redo because I've usually undone something too many times. Now if a command doesn't show up here on this list, what you can do, there's redo, but if it doesn't show up on this list, up here's a drop down. At the moment it's choosing commands from what's called popular commands, but uh, you can change that to be any of the actual tabs in the application. So there's the draw tab there. I can choose any buttons off the draw tab. And uh, there's some other options for, oh, what's on the commands not on the ribbon, for example. The list gets very, very long, though, if you choose that. So it's best to to uh, filter down to things you, you know you want. Um, I'm just going to go to the draw tab here. This is now everything that's on the draw tab in OneNote. So I've got the undo and the redo. I also want the pens, which are not there. So let me go to popular commands. There we go. I'm going to go favorite highlighter one add. So it's one of the highlighters. And let's have two of the pens. 
favorite pen one and two. And I'd also like shapes there, which is a drop down. If it has a little arrow next to it, it means that it becomes a drop down for selecting further items off. So I'm going to keep that. And there's also the selecting thing, the lasso selector there, because I want to be able to select objects that I've just drawn. And I want the this tool here, the type tool. That lets me also drag the page around, which is very useful, because you need to be able to drag the page. There is a hand tool in here somewhere. Um, but I found this one a little bit more useful for the same purpose. So, select objects or type text. That's that one. You can recognize it by the icon if you can see it in close in detail. And lasso select shapes. Undo redo. Oh, erasers. I want some erasers. I'm going to go to the draw tab. And I want the large eraser, and I want the one with the stroke there, the stroke eraser that I talked about in my previous video. Okay, those are all the items I want on this toolbar. Um, the next thing to do is to organize them how I'd like them to be. And because I'm right-handed, I want things that I'm gonna, I think I'm going to use often up here on the right. And so with that in mind, I'm going to have the selection one there. Not the lasso select, that won't be used a whole lot. Um, undo redo, I'm going to move up to the right. Redo. And move my shapes back to the start. Favorite pen one, two, highlighter and select there. So I've got shapes, select, lasso select, uh, favorite pen, one, two, highlighter, large eraser, stroke eraser, undo, redo, and select objects or type text right there. So um, when I go OK, all those items will now appear here in the top bar. There they are. Now the next thing we can do, of course we've still got this thick bar here, which um, I don't want, so what we're going to do is now we can remove that using this button over here, which normally gives you three options to auto-hide it, just show tabs, or show everything. It's showing everything right now. If we auto-hide it, we get into this problem where those buttons disappear. It'd be great if they still showed up there, but they don't. So, and you'd have to do this to get them back, which brings everything back. It's just one tap too many. Um, so what I'm going to do is use the middle one there, show tabs. That gives us that sort of arrangement. It's not a lot less. It's more like, um, what's that? It's less than a quarter, um, more than a fifth. Um, certainly a bit less than we were using before. So there's a bit more space here, which is quite nice. And now I can pick a pen and go, hello. Or let's just underscore it. Let's just uh, do it like that. And oops, I've made a mistake. So let's go to the <clears throat> the stroke eraser. Tap that, it's gone. Move that little dot. Move the black line in there. Go away. There we go. That's how the stroke eraser works. Um, if I don't like something, I can very quickly undo it, redo it. Um, if I want to move things, this is the point, I can click that one, the move thing, and now, this is important, I can move stuff. Um, I can also move stuff with my fingers, which is great, and zoom in and out, and so on and go back to the pen to draw. Go back to that to move, undo, and so on and so forth. All of a sudden it's a whole lot more useful than I thought it was going to be. So I'm quite pleased with that. Um, one more thing, because the type of thing I'm going to be doing typically is just sketching something to show someone things, I wanted to use this shape tool. So the shape tool lets me go, you know, draw, let's say there's a menu down there, um, when I first drawn it, I can, oops, go like that. Da -da -da. 
You can see I've lost my selection on that, so I can, and there may be a better way to do this, but that lets me do it using the uh, shape lasso selector. And then I can move this thing around, right? So I'll just leave it where it was. Um, and let's draw something else. Let's draw a another box here. And let's say we're going to do, oops, another box right there. And then imagine we wanted to have some lines going between them. Uh, let's uh, move that down a bit. Put a line between those two. And then let's say another line going out to a circle. Oops. Undo. I'm not sure if there's a quicker way to do that selecting, but I'll look into that. Um, so there we go. That's pretty cool. Um, I could then go ahead and go say that's my nav, um, that's my header, and my terrible writing, and so on and so forth. And there's my output. So that does it. That um, is pretty good for drawing stuff. I'm moving around the page, uh, come down here, change the text, and go, hello, here we go. Put some text in there. Hello, hello, here we go. Yep, not too bad. Close it and it's saved. Now, there's one more thing before we go, and that is I want to show you another feature. Because I'm right-handed again, and I'm, I, on this capacitive screen, I can't rest my hand on the screen, otherwise it starts to do stuff. I need to keep it over here on the right, either rest it there or down below. And so the more I have things available over here, hence why those buttons are there, um, the better. Now this section here where the, pa where the pages are, I notice there's a feature we can get rid of that as well. And if we just go into the settings, options, and on the display section, we've got page tabs appear on left. Enable that. And voila, the uh, tabs move over to that side. So now, once again, I'm drawing here on the right, which is going to be a bit easier for me. I'm just going to delete this stuff. Go a da 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 da. Go to there. Select that. Oops, come back here. Select that. Delete. Okay. Um. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, I think that's a big improvement, and as a result, I'll probably be using the desktop Outlook for taking notes after all. And that's great. I mean, it's a much more powerful application anyway. So I'm moving, starting to move away from using the Metro interface, which is what I was having to avoid. I wanted to use the Metro interface, but when you have a full desktop available with full office apps and so on, you know, what can you do but be drawn to it? So uh, there we go. I'm going to do a few more videos tonight about some further features, so watch out for those. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.